In this video, we're going to look at the new and advanced but very easy to use typography features now available in CorelDRAW X6. In our previous video, we learnt how to create this multi-page brochure. We actually worked with the brand new layout toolbar, we worked with the new and improved connect, and we also did a lot of work here in the object manager. We created a multi-page document that utilises the new page numbering feature. We also created a background layer so that that nice rich background colour appears across all pages, making the design process easy. We learnt how to create a layer and place objects on a layer, and we can even select those objects from that layer. Well, in this video, we're mainly going to work with the Object Properties Docker. It's been quite updated and improved. When I select this piece of text, automatically we're taken to the character properties within the Object Properties Docker, and there's a lot to work with here. Well, while this text looks clean and crisp and does work well with this brochure, I'm sure there's a lot more we can do, so let's go to work. For those of you who are unsure how to access the Object Properties Docker, it's found under Window, Dockers, and here, Object Properties, or use Alt-Enter. The Object Properties Docker has existed in previous versions. However, in CorelDRAW X6, it really has had quite the work over, particularly this area here, which is the area of open type features, which we're going to learn all about in this video. Well, first of all, the Object Properties Docker can be easily collapsed. If I click Collapse, all of the various sections underneath are collapsed. And then I have these icons at the top where I can choose what section I wish to view. So if, for example, I click the paragraph section, then it becomes the dominant section within the Docker. And the same with uh, summary, internet, etc. But of course, we're going to be working in the character section. Previewing fonts from within the object property Docker is really easy. So while your text is selected, simply drop down the font list. As you hover the mouse, over a font automatically it will update in real time as you hover. Isn't that fantastic? You'll also notice this little symbol at the front of the fonts. The majority here have the symbol O but we also have a TT. TT stands for a true type font and O stands for open type fonts. Open type fonts gives the font manufacturer the ability to add extended features, open type features. A number of the fonts included in X6 contain these open type features. The more renowned fonts like Frutica, Futura, Garamond, Helvetica, and Zapfino that you can see here. These top five exist here in the list because they are the last five typefaces I've selected. Well, I'm going to choose Zapfino because Zapfino contains many of the advanced open type features allowing me to demonstrate this new section here in the object properties docker. To help us understand what's about to happen as we look at all of the advanced open type features I've added some extra lines here. This line is called the baseline and then we have what we call the X height and you can see that the X height is where the main area of lowercase characters exists. From the baseline through to the ascender line, well that's where the main body of the characters exist of course. You'll notice that there are some pieces in this particular case that move outside of this line. For right now, I just want you to understand that when a font manufacturer creates an open type font, he works inside of these parameters. So as we select varying features and we see the font change, you can be assured the font will still be working inside of these parameters. Well, let's come over here to this area. This is really the brand new open type features area. Effectively, if you see a symbol and it's not greyed out like these other ones, then that means that that set of features or feature is available for this particular open type font. If you're a professional, well, these symbols will mean something to you. However, for those of us who are not professionals, this is such a great place to experiment. For example, if I go to Stylistic Alternatives, click the little triangle and just choose one of the alternatives. See how the typeface changes. Let's go and select another one. And you see this one has got all these little glyphs coming down the bottom past the baseline. Well, let's click None and let's move on to the next one, Stylistic Set and we'll click on 01. Now it's interesting, nothing happened. 
That doesn't mean that there's nothing available there. What it means is that whatever that particular stylistic set is, we don't have the right characters or grouping of characters that that stylistic set would be applied to. So don't worry, just move on, turn that one off, and move along to one of the others. And look at the effect that that has. Doesn't that look fantastic? Well, as I say, this is a great place to experiment and try all sorts of different things and see what it is that you can create. However, there is another way that I want to show you as well. Corel have done such a great job of letting us see what's available for an open type font. Let me demonstrate. If I double click to bring up the text tool and highlight the letter B, and in fact I'll make that black in color so we can easily see it, this little arrow appears. Now it's the interactive open type preview. Whatever characters you have selected, now you can have one character, multiple characters, or multiple words selected, but you can't have more than one line selected at a time. Now remember, when you have different groups of letters selected, different open type features will be available. For example, right now I have the letter B selected, and if I click, these are all of the possibilities that exist for that letter B. And as I move over them, we see a real-time preview. And again, you can see how they fit inside of the ascender line, baseline, and X height, etc. Always remember that the original, well, that's the form that it is in right now. And the letter B may have one of the many stylistic sets already applied to it, but original is the way it looks before I start changing it. I can choose any one of these. I'm going to choose the swash variance option. Now remember, if we select a whole word, and I'll make that all black in color. Because we have more characters selected, there's likely going to be more open type features available. And we can see all of the options here. How great do they all look? And again, I'll say it. Corel have done an amazing job in giving us the ability to easily preview and access open type features. Well, I'm going to go with Stylistic Set 4. I'm going to make that white in color, deselect, and I really like this typeface. It works so well with this brochure. Let's go on to page four. I've placed the phone number we're going to use four times for this demonstration with a baseline. As I select the first phone number, you can see the font I've used is the open type font Frutica Serif because it has a lot of open type features. We're going to look at the number styles option. Choose proportional lining. Now watch the phone number. You'll see it closed up. Effectively, the spacing now is based upon the actual character width of each of the numbers. And it's a good option to use inside of text blocks because it spaces very similar to text. Now for the next option, I'm going to choose tabular lining. Not much will change with tabular lining. It spaces the characters as though they were all the identical width and height. The next one, we're going to choose proportional old style and that's a great looking style. You can see how some of the strokes are coming below the baseline and we now have the effect of uppercase and lowercase. Again the spacing is based on the actual width of the characters. For the final one we'll look at tabular style old. What this is is identical to the, this one here except the characters are spaced as though they were all the identical width apart. And don't they all look fantastic? I'm going to stay with the tabular old style, so I'll delete all of the others. I want this to be 24 point and white in color. Pop that over there. Double click in front, we'll type mobile. Now I want to create a duplicate, so control D, pop that there. Double click and we'll type in headquarters. Now what I want to do is turn on alignment guide so I can align to the back of the number four and then align that one to the same and there we go we've created our phone numbers. All right let's now go to page two. Here on page two I want you to notice that when I select the text frame we have here on the object properties docker we have another icon, the frame icon, which gives us access to various properties concerning text frames. The first option is the ability to turn on or off alignment to the baseline grid. And if you recall, we did align to the baseline grid earlier, so I'm going to leave that on. 
We also have the ability to see vertical alignment in real time as we hover over the various options we have available. We can also add a background color. If I choose gray, that allows my white to show up, or I can choose an alternate color. But for now, I'm going to have no color. And we can also now add columns. You can add as many columns as you want, and you can have this option turned on, which gives you equal column width for every column that you create. They will all be resized equally. Alternatively, you can go with this option that gives you the ability to manually adjust the width, the gutter, etc. Well, for now, I'm going to stay with one column and come over to paragraph. I've gone ahead and created a second text frame, and inside of that, I have a copy of the first paragraph of our original text. I've done this so that you have a good before and after example. Well, of course, here in paragraph properties, we have all the usual things like center, right justify, full justify, etc. I want to quickly jump down here and look at word spacing because word spacing can deeply impact upon the readability of a paragraph. Now, as I increase, you can see how it does become easier to look at. So this is an area that's worth experimenting with when you have large paragraphs of text that you think are difficult to read. Another area that impacts is character spacing. As I increase character spacing, it also has a deep impact on the readability of the paragraph. Also worth noting, when you have a text frame of a specific size and you need your text to fit, character spacing is a great way to open or close up your text so it can fit. We then have before paragraph spacing, after paragraph spacing, but quickly I want to look at line spacing. If I type in 200, for example, just to exaggerate the point, you can see that line spacing also impacts on readability. So the combination of these three, word spacing, character spacing, and line spacing, is worth looking at when it comes to readability. If I type in a value of 10 for the first line indent, it actually is a really great looking effect. If, however, I also want a left line indent, I also type in a value of 10, I can create an entire indent on the left hand side. If I drop this back to zero, well that's an interesting effect also. But I want them to be both at 10 for the moment. I'll also come over to right line indent and I'll change that to 10 as well. So now I have a right indent of 10 mil, a left indent of 10 mil. This really shows up when we have full justify selected. Doesn't that look great? Well, working with paragraph properties really is a place to spend some time to perfect your final project. Another great new feature in CorelDRAW X6 is the ability to save for earlier versions so that we can see the same results. Even though X6 uses new open type features, we can actually save and preserve the look in an earlier version. If I go File and Save As, and I've already done that here. I've saved in what we call an editable and a non-editable version. But just to demonstrate this, let me just call this test and click save as version 15. We now have a new dialog box. The first option here, keep text editable, means that should the document contain a font using open type features, those features will be removed and just the straight font will appear in the document. However, if we choose Keep Text Appearance, then the open type features and font we've used will be converted to curves. Let me demonstrate this for you. I'm going to open X5. Now, here in X5, when I double click the B7 Pisces, you can see it's been converted to curves. If I look at the other editable version, you can see all we're left with is the straight Zapfino font without all of the open type features. Back here in X6, if I open those same files, File, Open, and I'll open the editable and non-editable version, what we see is a new toolbar. In fact, if I select some text, it also appears in the Object Properties Docker, and it appears particularly in the area where open type features are supported. So effectively, because this was saved as an old version, X6 is saying update to support the new features, including open type features. Well, let's move on to our next video now, working with object styles.